St. Luke's, and it's great to be back with you all for this midweek message. Um, like many of you, I have uh, had a somewhat subdued week, um, given the news and the images that have come out of uh, Israel um, in that horrific attack um, that they are still um, both recovering from and preparing for uh, retaliation. And so like you, um, as I know, since I've spoken with many of you, we've been praying, we've been um, praying for the families, praying for the nation, praying for um, all involved that, um, that uh, there would be, um, as we say, peace in Jerusalem. And so I um, share that with you, um, but we are a praying church. Uh, the people around the world are praying uh, for peace, for an end to the bloodshed, for, um, for uh, comfort for the victims. And we will add our prayers of intercession um, to those of the church as, they, as we cry out to God um, that his um, justice would be, would be uh, shown forth in the world. But we've also been reminded once again of the darkness of the human heart and of the sin um, for which Jesus died and the evil that, that um, human beings are capable of. And so we are um, sort of simultaneously uh, shocked and also reminded um, of um, all of the reasons why Jesus came and all of the reasons, uh, all of the, the things from which we have been saved, uh, but also uh, the capabilities of the sinful human heart and the hope of redemption that we proclaim, that we preach um, to a lost and hurting world. And so, you know, I, I have a lot of announcements here that I'm looking at on our leaflet, and I commend them to you. Um, there will be appended, I believe this this. Um, this video will be appended to the e-zine, but I, I really just had two things I wanted to talk about. First, we we're going to um, open and then conclude with prayers for um, Israel and um, the people there. Um, but also, we are want to invite you um, to a uh, this Sunday. We're going to have a healing service. Very um, poignant timing, I would say, for us. Uh, it is in observation of the feast day of Saint Luke, who is our uh, patronal feast, the, our namesake of our church here. And um, we are going to have a healing service at both 8 o'clock and 1030. And this will involve an opportunity for you to come forward um, after the uh, creed in, during the service for a prayer, an anointing with oil, uh, as we are commanded to do in the Bible for the sick, um, and a prayer for healing. Now, this will not be a, a lengthy process because uh, you will have an opportunity, and you have an opportunity at any time, for that matter, to contact us and one of the clergy in particular. We'd be happy to pray with you, although um, we are certainly encouraging prayers amongst you all uh, for each other, and I know that you do. We have a wonderful, um, uh, loving tradition of intercessory prayer here at this church, for which I'm um, deeply uh, grateful for and was and was uh, overjoyed to um, to know that this long preceded me. So uh, thank the Lord for that. But you will have an opportunity to come forward and um, and pray for healing. This can be healing, physical healing. This can be emotional healing. Um, this could be relational healing. This could be healing of deliverance from perhaps a, a, a besetting sin or an addiction. It's, this is something between you and the Lord that we are going to intercede on your behalf and trust that um, that your prayer and our prayers joined with yours will be heard um, by our uh, Heavenly Father. And so this is be the process this Sunday. And so I um, look forward to uh, introducing some of you, if you've never been to a healing service, uh, to this wonderful um, uh, witness of our church. We are not only a praying church, but one that believes in the power of prayer and the ability and power of God to heal uh, in, in whatever capacity or way he desires. Um, and so we will intercede with you on behalf of, um, of your prayer lifted to the Lord this Sunday. So that's 8, 8 o'clock and 1030, both services. Um, so please come prepared. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Just a little bit about St. Luke's from our um, holy men, holy women, uh, just so you know. Um, you may know this. Luke was a Gentile, a physician, and one of Paul's fellow missionaries. In the early spread of Christianity through the Roman world, he's been identified as the writer of both the gospel which bears his name and its sequel, the Acts of the Apostles. He had apparently not known Jesus, but was clearly much inspired by hearing about him from those who had known him. Luke wrote in Greek so that the Gentiles might learn about the Lord, whose life indeed so impressed him. In the first chapter of his gospel, he makes clear that he is offering authentic knowledge about Jesus' birth, ministry, death, and resurrection. The gospel is not a full biography. None of the gospels are, but rather a history of of salvation. As you may know, in the opening, um, he writes to his friend, dear Theophilus, and he says he has endeavored to 
put to paper an orderly account of all the things that he has heard concerning this man, Jesus Christ. And he goes um, and, and gives uh, a um, wonderful account of the life, work, death, and resurrection of Jesus in his gospel. And then goes on with Paul um, to document the growth of the early church in the Acts of the Apostles. So we are very much indebted to St. Luke's, not only as an evangelist, but also as, as we heard, a physician which is why it is uh, appropriate to have a healing service on the day of his um, feast. So the prayer that you may hear on Sunday says, Almighty God, who did inspire your servant Luke the physician to set forth in the gospel the love and healing power of your son, graciously continue in your church this love and power to heal, to the praise and glory of your name. Well, we have, you all have here at St. Luke, set forth the his love and power to heal, proclaiming his name. And we, by God's grace, will continue to do so, not just simply to Hilton Head, but to all who are in earshot of um, our ability to proclaim the amazing saving grace of God to the world. And to that end, we will continue to join our prayers, as I said before, with the church around the world as we intercede on behalf of the Jewish people during this time of conflict. And not simply for them right now, but all of the various um, uh, people that are involved in the um, the reality of sinful existence this side of heaven, um, victims of violence and oppression and bloodshed. And we, um, we are reminded acutely uh, this week of how um, dark um, the world world can be, but also how light, how bright the light can shine, even in the midst, or especially in the midst of darkness. So we will uh, pray, um, as we, uh, as our Facebook post said, we will pray uh, for comfort and peace for those who've lost loved ones and homes, according to 2 Corinthians 1, 2, and 4. We will pray for the war to end, and, and uh, in Matthew 5, 9, we will pray for God's intervention and rescue, or Psalm 46, 1, and we'll pray for the nations that seek to seek God and to know him. And so I um, commend uh, that prayer to you, those prayers, and I also will conclude not only with colics for peace of the world, but a specific prayer uh, given to us by Archbishop Foley Beach um, from uh, the ARDF, the Anglican Relief and Development Fund. So I will conclude with these prayers for you here today. For the peace of the world, eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. And Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, strengthen and protect those affected by the Israeli Hamas war, and so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. Well, amen and amen. Until Sunday, I hope to see you there. I pray that you will have a wonderful day, a wonderful rest of the week, and God bless.